Good day everyone, this is me, your Sir Orly, your science teacher, and welcome for another week of learning science. So let's start! Okay, last week we had an introduction of elements. We learned that elements are the building blocks of matter, and we also learned that elements has physical and chemical properties. So can you name those properties? Good job! For this week, we will discuss Module 2D, Non-Metals. So for this module, we need your science notebook, paper, ball pen, your module, and a periodic table. Don't forget your periodic table. Okay, Science First Quarter, Module 2D, Non-Metals. So get your modules and follow, okay? So that we are on the same page. Okay, introductory message. So please read that one, okay? This is very important also. Okay, so on page, page this, and page, uh, pre page seven, here are your objectives for this video so at the end of this video we will identify which elements are non-metallic by nature okay second is to locate the regions of non-metals in the periodic table of elements and recognize the general properties of metals and list down materials found in the society that contain non-metals before going through our discussion you must answer what I know first so this is to check your prior knowledge about the topic. On your paper, write the letter of your choice. Write the letter only. Okay, so let's start with lesson one, non-metals. Going to the right of the Sanderson line in the periodic table, elements that are opposite to metals. These classifications are called non-metals. The concept of the module will limit to non-metals. So this is a periodic table of elements. So this table arranges elements periodically. That's why it is called periodic table of elements. From big, from smallest to biggest. Okay, from um, lightest element to weight to the heaviest element according to their weight, according to their atomic number, and so on. The periodic table of elements, it also shows the element name, the symbol, and the atomic number, and so on. Okay, like for example, this first element here. So this H, this H, big letter H, is the element symbol, and the name is hydrogen. And the number, the top left corner which is one is the atomic number of hydrogen and we can also see that there's a bunch of number below so this is the um, atomic weight of hydrogen we can see a lot of information in the periodic table of elements and it is very handy in our periodic table it also shows three major groups of elements metals, non-metals, and the metalloids. Okay, so now you've seen the overview of periodic table. Now, we will have, we will do activity number one, the non-metallic bomb. Okay, so direction, on your paper, just write non-metals found or mentioned in the palm. Okay, so let's all read. Read with me. So this is on page 5. Let's know the non-metals. In our group, there are seven non-metallic elements. We are hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and selenium. We are elements that possess lack metallic characteristics, one of the periodic table's most amazing classifications. 
H is hydrogen. Its atomic number is 1. Its atomic mass is 1.008. Its symbols H. H is the lightest element ever in the periodic table. H is monatomic and he forms the most abundant chemical substance in the universe. C is carbon. Its atomic number is 6. Its atomic mass is 12. Its symbol is C in the mix. Carbon is found in fuels such as coal and oil. It is a key component of steel. Learn more about it when you are able. N is nitrogen. Its atomic number is 7. Its atomic mass is 14. N is its symbol. There's a lot more to this pump. It is important to the chemical industry and it, used, it is used to make fertilizers, nitric acid, nylon, dyes, and explosives. O names oxygen. It has an atomic number 8. Its atomic mass is 15 triple 9. The symbols O isn't that awesome, kid. She is the third most abundant element in the universe. After these elements, hydrogen and helium, of course. P is phosphorus. Its atomic number is 15. Its atomic mass is 30.973. P is its symbol, as you see, right? It is an important plant nutrient. And red phosphorus is used on the side of matchboxes at home. It's what you strike the match to create fire. S. Name is sulfur. Its atomic number is 16. Its atomic mass is 32.06. Its symbols S. There is where it's in. It is widely used in the vulcanization of black rubber and as a fungicide and in black gun powder. And I am selenium. My atomic number is 34. My atomic mass is 78.96. Symbols SE stands for me. I am found in soil and act and occur naturally. So, have you listed all the mentioned elements? Just go back and reread the poem if you haven't. Okay, so if you're done, let's continue. Okay, on page 7, nonmetals describe. As I said a while ago, there are three major kinds of elements found in the periodic table. Metals, non-metals, and metalloids. For non-metals, most are gases at room temperature. Except for bromine, which is the only non-metal that is liquid by nature. So in solid forms, non-metals are usually brittle, powdery, and dull to look at. So unlike metals, which are shiny, hard, ductile, and malleable, non-metals are the exact opposite. The electrons of nonmetals are loosely held and are not free to move so they cannot conduct electricity or even generate heat. So let's move on to the properties of nonmetals on page 7. So in this module listed there are listed five general properties of nonmetals. So the first one, nonmetals are not lustrous at all when they are in solid forms. So as I said a while ago, unlike metals which are shiny, um, non-metals are not shiny at all. Number two, non-metals can be gases or volatile liquids at room temperature and others can still be solid. If they are in solid forms, they tend to become dull, powdery, or brittle. Number three, non-metals break easily. They are not malleable at all. So remember malleability. So this is the um, property of matter that can be rolled into thin sheets. Okay, number four. Non-metals have low boiling point and melting points, except for carbon in the form of diamond. Okay, because diamond is the hardest material found on Earth. Number five. Non-metals are poor conductors of heat and electricity due to their loosely held electrons. Okay. So, looking at the table, you will notice that non-metals have the opposite features to metals but they have the same important roles in the society. A 
now let's move on to page 7 of your mojo, regions of non-metals in the periodic table. The right of the Sanderson line, so that's the heavy ladder-like line which passes along boron, aluminum, silicon, germanium, arsenic, tin, telenium, polonium, and astatine is the exact location of the majority of the non-metals in the periodic table. So can you point them one by one? Yes, we have carbon, nitrogen, fluorine, helium, neon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, selenium, bromine, tellurium, iodine, oxygen, xenon, krypton, radon, astatine, and hydrogen. So those are the non-metals in the periodic table and they are concentrated to the right of the periodic table of elements. Okay, so now let's move on to page 9, uses of non-metals. Okay, as I said a while ago, non-metals are the exact opposite of metals, but they are also important in our environment. So let's check the uses of non-metals. Okay, so that's it. Let's move on to page 10 once more. And let's do activity number 2, verifying some proportions. Okay, so this is just a true or false question. So in your paper, write true if the statement is true and false if not. So let's have number one. Okay, I will give you number one as a bonus question. Number one, non-metals are found on the right of the Sanderson line. Correct. The answer is true. So you will do numbers two to ten. Okay. Okay, so pause this video if you're not done, if you're still answering, and play it again if you're done. Congratulations, we are done discussing Module 2D, Non-Metals. Now let's test what you've learned and answer assessment on page 12. We have reached the end of this video. So that's all for this week. See you again next time. Bye-bye.